What's going on today, YouTube? Welcome back. Thank you for joining me today for this video session. Uh, today, what we're going to be talking about, or not even talking about, we're doing stuff today. All right, so today what we're doing is we are doing a grid heater delete on the 6.7 along with an intake manifold from Pusher Intake. If you guys are following the uh, my Instagram page, everything underscore diesel, or everything diesel on Instagram, you guys will have the heads up and the snippets of me prepping the uh, intake manifold so if you guys don't know I'll show you once uh once I break bring it out and stuff I'll show you guys how it looks the final results and whatnot but I think you guys are really gonna like it I think it's gonna be a real clean nice install on the truck um, I'm curious to see how it's gonna sound after apparently it gives it more uh, it's more throatier I guess like because it's sucking in air more efficiently plus the grid heater delete so I'm really looking forward to that um, Later on in the video, maybe towards the end, depending on how long it is, I'm going to try to keep this relatively short video, uh, under 20, but um, I I'll explain why I'm doing a grid here delete, because in my opinion, I feel like it's not needed for this truck, um, and I'll explain why I believe that. You might think I'm wrong, you might think I'm right, it is what it is, but nonetheless, uh, we're going to go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to go ahead and start off, and it's going to be a drive-by clip of the truck. Um, it's pretty much just going to be how it sounds uh, driving by when and then I open up on it a little bit and then I'm gonna do it again after to see if we notice a difference okay so let me know what y'all think all right so I appreciate y'all watching uh, hang tight and I'm going to get that film right now of the of the pre drive by uh, all right I'm back uh, we just got back from doing the drive by uh, real quick before I start working on the truck, I wanted to introduce my neighbor, Shane. He's a cool kid. Uh, he got good handling skills real quick. So with that, I'm going to show you Shane. Hello. What's up, Shane? Show me some of your skills, man. Oh, snap. I wasn't ready. <laughs> show me what you're working with. This kid got skills, man. Look at that. Oh, snap. Money. Heck yeah. Okay, so I'm back now. So now we're going to go ahead and we are going to start removing all this mess, okay? First thing we're going to start with is going to be the dipstick. Going to get that off. These bolts right here. These are going to be, let's see. Uh, the horn bolts are 10 mils, and I'm pretty sure these are 10 mils also. You're going to be using, okay? So tools, the tools that you need for this job. And I'm, I'm, I'm straight up reading this off paper. You're going to need an 8 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter deep weld socket. Uh, well, here, I'll show you guys while I'm, while I'm reading it. So you need a 10 mil deep weld socket, a 7 16 deep weld, half inch deep weld, a uh, 1 inch deep weld socket or wrench, 9 16 wrench, 7, 17 millimeter wrench, 19 mil wrench, 6 millimeter Allen head, flathead screwdriver, razor blade, uh, the other stuff, zip locks and all that, that's kind of not necessary probably just because of fuel but yeah that's what we're gonna need okay so I'm going to go ahead and I got all my tools laid out over here oh shit I almost forgot to show you guys the horn <laughs> this is it <clears throat> end product tell me what y'all think how do you feel about the about that gold yeah man I think it look clean put three coats of paint and then three coats of paint and then uh what you call it uh, three coats of clear and then the key to get it to hold is going to be bake it put it in the oven and bake it 200 degrees one hour and then take it out here is our grid here delete plate I got this from Rudy's Diesel last summer uh, I'm just not getting around to installing it and then we got the hardware here for it so I'm going to get you guys set up I'm going to get you guys set up on the pod and then I'm going to start taking this stuff apart and doing the time lapse okay and I'll stop within certain sections once I get to a point that way you guys kinda know where I'm at but it's pretty simple take the horn off take the horn off take your bracket off uh, the fuel rail you're gonna have to move you're gonna have to two ways you can do it you can either fully remove it or get it enough removed so you can slide the other plate out but nonetheless you're still gonna have to remove all the hardware for the fuel rail bolts mounted to the grid heater so once I get, the, I'm gonna take the horn out. Once I get the horn out, I'll get you guys. I'll uh, have you guys back up on. All right. All right. 
So I got it out. Uh, this is the old intake manifold. Or the, yep. Check this. Check all that out. Tell me what y'all think. Look at all that set. Now, a lot of this was from before when it had the DPF delete on it, okay? I put all this on here, put that, and this obviously came with the plate. But look how restrictive that is. Um, I'm going to do a side-by-side -side of the new and the old one. So, All right, check this out, fellas. Tell me what y'all think. I ain't no wizard or nothing, but that looks a lot more restrictive than that. Night and day, you get about you get about that much clearance here. Bring that over here. Look at that; it fits in there. So this is gonna flow way better. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to put this on. Flip that over. I don't want this to get dirty. Even though I kind of did already. Okay, so out with the old and with the new. You come over here. This is why I am doing a grid here to delete. It's not needed. Like it's, it seriously isn't. You know what I'm saying? So we're getting rid of it, man. It's time for it to go. All right. So all I did was the 10 meter, the 10 millimeter bolts here, knocked them off, took off the bracket for the oil stick, and then there was a little. You guys saw me get a razor blade. The reason why I got a razor blade was because I had to cut. There was a clamp somewhere on here. I had to cut. And it was it was just zip tied to the back side of the old manifold. So I just I just cut it out. Here's the uh oh. Drop the clamp. And it's on the ground, so it's fine there. Here's the, uh, the tube. I did not get a replacement tube. This is it. Earlier, if you guys noticed me spraying uh, this on the clamp, the reason why is because a lot of times, and I didn't have this problem with this one because I took that, that one I put on like not even a year ago, but a lot of times those clamps will get pretty much seized on to the elbow. So what you have to do is you have to just get a flathead, wedge it in there, spray some liquid, some, something that oil or something to get it loose. And then it helps uh, taking it off a lot, especially because the lip on them makes it where it can't come off on its own. So it can be, you're going to have to fight with it. Um, also, on the back side, you guys saw me get the Allen key. I told you already, but this was the probe on the back side of the uh, intake manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and keep trucking. Uh, next is going to be pretty much taking the plate off. So from here, minus the wires, I'm probably going to have to unplug them. I'm going to unplug this wire. And then the same one back there, that teal, that teal green looking one back there. Unplug both of those. Get this harness out the way. Uh, try to unplug this. I don't even know what this is. Oh, it's coming out right now. Oh, wow. Whew. Okay, that's off now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these off. Get the harness out the way. Oh, there's another one back there. Lovely. Um, get the harness out of the way and then we'll be able to see this better, okay? Okay, so right now I am removing the fuel line. Okay, uh, it's I'm pretty sure the fuel line on this truck has never been removed ever in its life. So it is extremely, it's extremely, uh, it's hard. Uh, big thing, take a picture. So actually, I'm about to do that right now. Um, take a picture of how it looks before you remove your stuff. If you're bad at memory like I am or orientation. Take a picture of it before you remove anything crazy. And then that way, if you forget, all you gotta do is go back to your picture and you can reference it. So, I'm gonna take a picture of it like that. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna lay the fuel lines in the same position, orientation wise, they will go onto the engine on my over here on the ground above my flatbed. So that way I'll have the fuel lines lined up the same way they will connect to the fuel rail manifold. And if you do that, man, you, you, you can't go wrong, you know? So, yeah. All right, you guys, just a status update, what's going on, because I know it's hard to see everything from the stand. So real quick, 
all I've did so far was all I did was remove the first two injector lines okay that runs to the fuel manifold I mean sorry to the fuel rail I mean technically it is a manifold that runs to the fuel rail back here okay and then what I did is over here I laid them down and this that doesn't count this is for something else this is the line going from the CP3 pump and then what I did from there is I just put them in order orientation of the way I took them off the truck so this is the number one this is the number two you can't get confused if you if you do it like that um, I'm gonna go back I'm just gonna keep going back and it, it kinda sucks I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie it kinda sucks cause these are super tight and the spaces you're working with are real small so if you expect to bust your knuckles you know what I'm saying so we're doing that um, once I get all of them off uh, I gotta take off the banjo bolt here I don't even know if I had the camera set up. I have to take off this banjo bolt, take that off, pull it back. Well, not pull it, but take it off and, yeah, take the bolt out. And then we'll go from there, okay? So I'm going to get you guys set back up on the pod. Okay, uh, I time last. I'm probably gonna time lapse a lot of this stuff, but it took. It's still good light outside, but it took. It took a little bit of effort. Um, for those of you that got tw uh, five nine, 24 valves uh, and 12 valves, you guys should be happy. You guys are lucky because uh, it's a pain in the ass trying to get to that number six injector line on these six sevens. Now I don't know exactly how it is on the. Because it's not common rail on <coughs> on the 12 valves, but common rail maybe actually probably is the same for the uh, 5 9 24 valves. So I don't know, but all I know is on these engines, that last line back there, have some patience and you better have some forearm muscle because it's no joke trying to get back there. So I'm gonna show y'all what we did so far and then I'm gonna keep going, making making progress. Okay, so pretty much I went ahead and I kept removing injector lines like I was telling you guys um let's see, let me get some light back here okay there we go I kept uh, removing making progress and removing them I'm trying to zoom in for you guys so as you can see I disconnected all the injector lines the only one left is that one and if you see back there one second I'm losing my focus I'm working with one hand one second Man, I suck. Okay. But anyways, if you look back... Oh, there we go. Heck yeah. So if you look there... <laughs> Alright, I'm done. So anyways, if you look back there, that's the last line. And back there is the line that goes into the injector. Um, that one was a nightmare monsters to get out so you got to have a, the perfect 9 19 mil wrench and have some good form to get that loose because it was not it was hard so I'm about to pop this uh, rail off get the plate out the way get the new one dropped in with the gasket um, let me zoom out and then we're gonna be good fellas okay so so far everything's going good uh, real quick a little note on the uh, from the side this is a ground this is the power wire for your, your grid here it's just a ground cable that runs to that side of the uh, that side of the negative terminal on the battery so you don't need this no more um, if you want to you can disconnect it from there and then you know completely remove it as you can see I really don't feel like going through all that right now so I'm just going to disconnect that side and just kind of zip tie somewhere and then later on down the road when I feel like it and I'm bored out to actually take it out but just know that you will no longer need this um, because you're not going to get power to your grid heater and you will not get a check engine light for not having it put, plugged up okay grid heater it's just this is it okay that's all it is when it comes to a grid heater so don't worry about check engine light you should be fine if you get a check engine light it's probably because you did something else wrong. You didn't plug nothing up, okay? Uh, with six sevens, with these boys, the, the big things that you have to plug up are really easy. This guy, the one back there, this guy here, I did optionally. You don't have to. 
these two lines but the cool thing is is all the lines are just long enough so they go back in the same spot it's like you can't mix them up you know what I'm saying like this one is the same as the one <laughs> sorry this one is the same as the one back there but you still have it you would you would have to do a shit ton of work in order to get any of the wires mixed up so wire confusion is not going to be a big deal when it comes to this okay so I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting this out because it is getting darker and I would it's just, I don't know, man. I hate working when it's dark, all right? So let me get you guys set up. Set up. So you guys, I got this out. Um... Real quick, this is what it looks like. Uh, a lot of that is it's just soot. Um, we can't really do nothing about that, but you know, it is what it is. Um, clean up. Next, we're gonna do is we're gonna clean up the surface here. Uh, get that all clean up with some brake cleaner and go from there. Okay, make sure you clean up this. All right, and also, if you're doing it wild like I'm doing it, because I'm kind of I'm kind of crazy when I do this, but I've been working on fuel systems for a, a little a good bit of time. Um, Make sure you don't get any dirt in your fuel rail or in the lines. These boys, see, we, what, what you want to do really is cap, if you can, cap or cover it all up. Uh, your injector lines, when you take them off, put them in a Ziploc bag and label them. Um, I'm not like that just because I'm a little, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little savage when it comes to it. So don't worry about that. I'm going to get this cleaned up real quick. Okay. Cleanup's all done. Uh, Went ahead and cleaned up the surface, got everything all nice and good looking. So when I go to put the new gasket on, I ain't gotta worry about, you know, not having a good clean surface to mate to. So real quick with this guy, we're gonna go ahead and transfer whatever needs to go onto this one, which in this case is only gonna be this bad boy right here. Get that swapped over, get the new gasket, drop it in, and then we're gonna start throwing this thing back together, okay? So I'll get back to you guys once I get that rolling. Hey, just a note, uh, people. I don't know what this what this probe is for, um, but make sure you clean it. Uh, it. It has carbon and stuff on it. This was gunked up. It screws into the plate of the grid heater. Uh, so I cleaned mine up. I just wanted to make sure to tell you guys that to clean this up. I just got some carbon cleaner and clean the tip. Okay, I got the new grid heater uh, delete plate. I'm gonna line up the gasket, get it back in position, throw the manifold back on it, and then. I say manifold, I'm talking about the fuel, the fuel rail. Uh, in our community, we call it manifold because it does the same thing in a sense, but this is for fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and get this back on, okay? Alright, check it out. So when you go to reinstall it, put the hardware back in first and get it all snugged up. To trying to finger it in there when all the lines are installed, <coughs> so like I did, I went ahead. That one is there, that it's the only reason why that's there is just to keep it in place. Um, I, I use this to keep it lined up so I can line up the other one. So I'm gonna take this one out now, put that over here with the other shit. Oh, wait, go oh, down. Oh, I found out. Oh, I see. Okay. And you're gonna go right down. I'll put that one in later. Okay, so check it out, y'all. Go ahead. Uh, God dang it, this thing is so annoying. Oh. Uh, all right, go ahead and get all your stuff in, lined up. You can run it down, torque it to spec. Um, that's what I'm gonna do right now. Get all your hardware in, nice and snug, and then go ahead and start throwing your uh, injector lines on after that, okay? That's what I'm gonna be doing right now. Yo, what up YouTube fam? Okay, so 
time lapse and all that good stuff. We got all the fuel lines back on. I had to go get my headlamp because it started getting dark. All of them are back on though, to say the least. And it looks freaking fantastic. Okay. I got the banjo bolt back on. Now I gotta get the fuel line. The fuel line here. All right, you guys, I went ahead and got all of the electrical connectors hooked up. So, one second, let me get up here. I went ahead and got all the stuff hooked back up. So I put hooked up these two, looks like vacuum lines or something. I hooked these up. I hooked up this guy, that guy back there, this guy right here. And if you guys can't see the one back, the one back there, it looks just like this. They're connected to the same harness. Just follow this wire, and it's the blue one back there, or whatever color yours may be. It's the same one as that one. Hook those up. Hook this guy up here, right there, up. Uh, hook that, whatever the fuck that is, <laughs> connected to the plate down there. You guys see that right there? Yeah, I hooked that up. Hooked that back up. Um, yeah. So we're ready to throw the manifold, the intake manifold on, man, you know, so it should be, oh, I got to put that bracket back on for, for that guy, but it should be good. So I'll get that back to you guys in a second once I get in position and get everything set up. Hey, real quick, everyone. So real quick, on, I'm not going to test this one because it's out of my hands. I got to put my gloves on first. So real quick, on your old one, the only, only thing you need to transfer is this guy right here, your mass airflow sensor, okay? Make sure you take that off. Uh, clean it up you, uh, with some, uh, don't use part cleaner, um, electrical cleaner would be better. Clean it up, the tip up, uh, put it on here. It's not going to go on the side for the pusher. These are for your like water meth, whatever injections and stuff. It's going to be on the bottom side and just put that in there. Um, the new kit came with, no, you're going to reuse this one. This, this, these two are plugs. These two plugs go here and then this is going to be for the new oil bracket uh, right here okay so I'm gonna do this real quick off camera just because it does not take that long and then I'm gonna get back when it's time to position and get everything installed okay okay so I messed up uh, the camera died I had a huge crazy battery issue so the camera died and come, come a little closer you look too far right. my wife's recording so this is bad it's her fault so I'm, my camera battery died and then I tried to do it with my cell phone my cell phone died and exploded it didn't explode it just died uh, but pretty much, come over here. So pretty much, everything got done and installed. Can you can you see into the engine? So point it like up in there. So we got the intake installed, and it's, everything came out good. Um, the manifold it came out really nice, along with the grid here delete. Um, but pretty much that was it for the most part. Let me see that real quick. So I can show them. Then I'll give it back to you. Uh, but yeah, it came. Everything came out perfect. Um, I cranked it up. When you first go to start it, um, it's gonna you're gonna have to hold the key for a while just because it's building building up that injection pressure, and it's gonna take a while. So don't think you something's broken if it doesn't start up right away. It's just the fuel pressure building back up. Also, along with that, make sure you uh, reconnect your airflow your air. God damn it! The sensor on the on the intake manifold. I can't think of the name right now. Mass airflow sensor. There we go. Make sure you connect your ma mass airflow sensor because I forgot to and it cranked up, but I got a check engine light like two seconds into it. So make sure you uh, do that. And if you don't have a tuner, then it's going to kind of suck because you're going to have to find a way to re reset it. But I cleared it and it was fine. Um, I'm going to do a crank up, a startup real quick, and then you guys can hear it. And then we're going to end this video out. Right, so you just grab, don't turn it crooked. Yeah. All right.
me. Just follow me with the camera. So, all right. So that was just the sound of how it sounds. Uh, it doesn't sound a whole lot different. Um, I haven't test drove it yet because it's dark and it's cold outside. So in the morning or whenever I drive it again, I'm gonna test it and let you guys know if I notice a noticeable difference with it. Uh, along with that, it was an easy install. It just takes time. Uh, there's no video on YouTube showing how to do this step by step. So this is gonna be the first video showing that. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I got people already commenting off the sneak pics from Instagram saying that they can't wait to see the install video so if you managed to watch this entire video I appreciate it and I thank you so much I think thank new followers people comment and stay engaged in the channel it really means a lot to me um if you like this video do me a favor and give it a like and thumbs up because YouTube's new algorithm it's all about likes and thumbs up like if you don't get that you're pretty much gonna stay at the bottom so we're trying to get to the top so make sure you do that um that's really it though 404 this it, it came out really clean I mean I got the intake manifold I put the I'll put the link in the video I got it off eBay and then I got the grid here delete from Rudy's diesel based here out of North Carolina up in Durham so everything worked out completely good um any other tips I can think of not really it's all in the video just take your time and you have the right tools for the right job and that's really it though but I appreciate you guys so much um just making sure there ain't nothing else I'm forgetting yeah that's it really though so don't forget to like the video first of all. Subscribe to the channel so that way you keep getting more content because more content is going to keep coming. Uh, and then also comment in the video. I want to hear what you guys think. So with that being said, take care. Peace out. Uh, God bless.